Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. It's all about the caustic clouds surrounding the maelstroms at the moment, and having a decent ship that can survive inside the cloud to collect all these materials. With that, I thought I'd take you through my caustic conda maelstrom build. It can certainly survive in the cloud, so let's take a look. Yes, caustic damage, caustic damage, and caustic damage. Oh my god, it can give you anxiety, it can give you hull damage, module damage, lost cargo, and end ultimately in destruction. But how do you build a ship that can survive there? Well, one way is to go out and get some materials so you can get a caustic sink launcher. But the iron irony there really is the fact that you've got to survive inside the cloud to get the caustic mechanisms, the chards, and all the rest of it. So, great. So all that is absolutely wonderful, but what do you do? What do you do once you manage to get in there? Well, this ship runs particularly cold, so I didn't really need that many heat sinks. I could fill them up with caustic sinks, to be perfectly honest with you. But let's talk a little bit about this caustic sink. So I went to this particular rescue ship that had them and I unlocked them. Once you unlock the caustic sink, uh, you can then buy them with credits. Cold hash, moolah, the cash, right? So once you go through the whole palaver of getting caustic tissues, corrosive mechanisms, you're straight in there, you can buy them and fit them out as many as you want. Now this particular build, I say it runs cold. I've got a pulse wave analyzer so I can help, helps me pinpoint those caustic generators bit like what it does for asteroids. I've got a couple of heat sink launchers, but like I mentioned, didn't really need those because my ship's running cold, like about 18 degrees. Um, and I've got an enhanced Xeno scanner, which means I can scan those critters from a thousand meters away, which is great. So I'm just transferring a couple of heat sinks or caustic sinks, I should say, over from one of those research ships. There's my enhanced Xeno scanner. You can see I've got my caustic sinks as well, but for the new commander, you haven't got to worry about those. Engineer your ship so it runs cold, have some decontamination limpets, have some repair limpets, perhaps a multi-limpet controller like what I've got, and you're away. So like I mentioned, we go into ship controls. Frontier have not, not at the time of making this video, allowed there to be a key entry assigned for the caustic launcher. Yes, for the standard, you know, heat, but not the caustic. So I was a bit of a swine. Going into core internal, military grade, yes, I could engineer that, but I just haven't had it in me to drag this ship halfway across the galaxy to get it done. I've got my power plant running on lower missions, um, and I got up to grade four. Thermal spread reduces the heat, and that's one of the best things about the power plant. It can reduce your, your your heat quite considerably. In regards to the thrusters, again, modifications, clean drive tuning, thermal spread. Downside of this is, well, because cut down on your speed. So if you get hyperdicted, those thargies are going to kick up a bit of a stink and catch you up. However, keep on boosting, that's what I say, right? Perhaps you could tune your power distributor for engines. This is kind of a research ship. In optional, I've got a universal multi-limpet controller, class seven in the Anaconda. It'll give me a smorgasbord of limpets and everything that I'm really gonna need, providing I do remember to put limpets in the cargo hold. I've got hull reinforcement with heavy duty hull reinforcement as far up as I could manage, typically about four or five. I've also got anti-corrosive cargo rack, um, a class five for that, which gives me 32. All the way down, I've got some module reinforcement, and I've also got a field maintenance unit, because I have found, no matter what I do, the cargo hatch is the first thing to go. And then you see your bounty and your limpets float away in front of you as your hull slowly disintegrates in your eyes. So I went, right, I'm going to have a small auto field maintenance unit. Now, these critters here are responsible for all this corrosive damage. These are the caustic generators. You can see when they're going to give out their caustic guff because one of their spires or spindles, whatever you want to call it, will start to glow green. It'll guffed it out and you either get absorbed or you move out of the way. Now there's a real knack to this. So on approach, you can see my ship is running at 18% heat. Lovely. 
It's colder than Frosty the Snowman's cold bits, but it could be colder. And for that, I do have my heat sinks. So I'm going to approach. I've got my enhanced Xeno scanner um, in the right port. I'm ready to go. Got to get nice and close within a thousand meters there. So once you're in a thousand meters, the little gray reticule will come up on your screen. There it is. I'm scanning it like a devil. I'm throttling back on the power. Again, I'm very cold. It's not alerted as yet to my presence because it hasn't started glowing red and not like it's going to blow up in my face. With that, Limpet Docking Port Controller gets selected and we fire off a research limpet. It's as simple as that. Somebody said uh, on my last video, well, you didn't show how I did it. I thought, I'm pretty sure I did. So for those particular commanders who had missed that, that's how you do it. Off goes that research limpet. It'll chase that cost it generated down. All you gotta do is remain a safe distance away. It'll dock and eventually it'll spew forth a caustic tissue sample. Now, how do you get all the other stuff? Well, a lot of the stuff typically has been floating around inside the maelstrom. So you have some collector limpets floating around with you as well. So you can go and pick those up. Great, lovely, fantastic. Um, if not, from a distance, Fire off some AX missiles at it. That will blow those caustic generators up. And then at your leisure, you can just float in there. Nice and smooth. Nice and silky. And let those collector limpets do their thing. Now, for some materials, they'll go straight into your material bank. For the caustic tissues, they need caustic resistant cargo storage. Okay, so be aware of that. Simple as that. The trick here is to run a cold ship, and I can't stress that enough. Having that cold ship, having some armor, get that military grade composite, the power plant, like I mentioned, with low emissions, get it engineered up, get the thermal spread, um, special effect on the end of it, experimental effect, and you won't go too wrong. The thrusters, yeah, you know, they'll cut down a little bit of heat as well. I mean, I've only got mine tuned to grade three. But with a the thermal spread experimental effect on them as well, that's certainly gonna cut your heat down. And it should cut down as well, how often you're interdicted between your jumping point and the actual maelstrom that you're looking at in question. Again, hull reinforcement, very important. I haven't gone for the meta alloy reinforced um, hull packages, simply because I haven't unlocked them. Um, there you are, complete honesty. But one thing I have found invaluable is that universal multi-limpet controller. Now, a lot of commanders have gone out there and done it in smaller ships. These could be the assault ship or the gun ship, whatever tickles your fancy, really. People have gone in with bigger ships like the Cutter or the Anaconda, like what I have as well. Personal preference, I think it's all down to heat. If you're not running um, a cool ship, then you are going to get poked by the proverbial baggy stick in the shape of these caustic generators. All about the heat, all about the heat dissipation, uh, making sure you've got some repair limpets on board, bit of decontamination, make sure you've got those research limpets so you can actually get that material out of it and you shouldn't go far wrong. Who knows what Frontier have got in store for us in regards to what's going on inside these huge caustic maelstroms. Only time's going to tell, and probably update 15 will tell us as well. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this video on my Caustic Conda Maelstrom build. It'll get you to, uh, you'll survive inside that Maelstrom, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to collect those materials and stock up before things get too crazy out there. I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.